Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So this is another lecture from the Strivers A to Z DSA course. So just in case you're for the first time here, this is world's most in-depth DS algo course. Why do I say that? Because you can go over the entire internet, buy any of the paid courses. None of them will have 456 modules. In this course alone, we will be solving 400 plus problems on DS algo. So at the end of the course, you will be so well versed with DS algo that you can clear any of the DS algo rounds in any of the interviews in any of the companies in any part of the world. So till now we have completed till step two. Today we will be starting with step three, which is nothing but arrays. So in order to understand arrays, what we will be doing is we will be solving 41 different problems. So before moving into the problems, let's understand some basic stuffs about array. So when I say array, what is an array? So array is nothing but a data structure which contains similar elements. Now, what do I mean by similar elements? It can be integers. But remember one thing, if it's a data structure, it has to contain integers only. It cannot contain integers string. It has to contain one particular type of data. So imagine I say integers. So the array can contain all of them as integers or maybe as character or maybe as string or maybe as pair. So array is a data structure which can contain any kind of data type. But one thing has to be clear that all of those elements has to be of the same data type. So now moving to the next point. Now how does an array look? Generally, if I have to draw an array, array is represented like this. Now, what is the size of this array? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the size of this array is 6. In order to declare an array of size 6, what, what you can do is you can write int array 6. That will do. If you're following Java, it should be int array, something like this, new int and size 6. This is how you can define in Java. Now, if you're defining an array of size 6, whenever you define something like this, what happens is an array of some garbage values is defined. If you're defining it inside the main function, like if you're writing something like int array and 6. So all of these 6 positions like this position, this position, this position, all of them will be stored with some garbage values. You cannot predict those garbage values. But in case, instead of declaring it inside the int main, if you decide that, hey, listen, I'm not going to declare it inside the int main. I will be declaring it before the int main. This is what we call as global. This is what we call as global. So if you're going to define the array globally, then all of them will be filled with zeros. This is what happens in C++ Java. Okay. I am not sure about Python, but should be something similar. Now you might be thinking, then Striver, you have defined an array of size 6. What is the maximum size of array that we can define? So the maximum size of array that you can define is 10 to the power 6. You can go ahead and say int array of 10 to the power 6. This is the maximum length of array that you can define. But there's a catch over here. This is the maximum size when you declare it inside. Yes, inside int main. This is the maximum size. Imagine you say that, okay, listen, I'm going to declare the array globally. So if I go ahead and say, okay, over here is where I'll declare the array. So if I declare the array globally, then it will be 10 to the power 7. It will be 10 to the power 7. So the max size is 10 to the power 7. If you go ahead and declare it globally, remember this. Now the next thing, how do you access an array? So there is something known as index. So in an array, the first index is 0 followed by 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So the last index is nothing but size minus 1. And the first index is nothing but 0. So the array indexing is from 0 to n minus 1. So in order to access any of the elements of the array, what you can do is you can just loop from i equal to 0 because 0 is the first index. You can go ahead till n minus 1 because n minus 1 is the last index. And you can run the loop as i plus plus. So if you go ahead and do a print of array of i, what will happen is this will one by one. First, the value of this will be array of zero. 
So whatever you have stored at array of zero, imagine this is an array of integers and I'm storing like two, three, one, four, seven, six. So what will happen is first two will get printed, then three will get printed, then one, then four, then seven, six. This is how you can easily access an array. So before moving on to the problem solving, let's understand where is array stored in the computer memory. So can you predict it? No. Can I predict it? No. So whenever you declare an array, something like this, it basically goes into the computer's memory, creates a block of like size six block. And the first block is stored in some random X address location. So this address location, no one can predict random X address location. And this X is where it stores the zeroth index element. But something we can predict is if this is X, the next first index will be stored at X plus one memory address. The next as X plus two, the next at X plus three, the next at X plus four and the next at X plus five. So contiguous memory locations is where all the corresponding indexes will be stored, but we cannot predict X thereby accessing an array by address is not possible. Hence we address it by an index. So this was about the basics of the array. Now let's move on to the problem solving. So coming to step 3.1, the first problem is largest element in an array. So before moving on to the problem, I want you to tell something Now, whenever you go to an interview, the interviewer will give you a question, but if you know the solution, should you say the solution directly? The answer to that is no. There is a reason why you're preparing. You might know the solution, but you should not tell it. You should build the interview. It's you who should drive the interview. When I say drive the interview, now this is a very easy question. But when I say drive the interview, imagine you have been asked a hard question and you know the optimized, like the most optimized solution in terms of time complexity and space complexity. Should you say it directly uh, whenever you are given the question? No, you should drive the interview. At first, you should ask him about test cases. Then once you've understood the question properly, you should give him the brute force solution, which is the like the most normal solution that comes to your brain at first. That is what you call as a brute force solution. Then you go ahead and maybe optimize it and maybe get something as a better solution. Now for every problem, better might exist, might not exist, but a brute usually does exist. You get a better one by optimizing the brute. Then you optimize the better to get the most optimal solution. So Again, there can be several other flows as well, like brute better, more better, optimal. It's you who will drive the interview. It's you who will decide how that 30 minutes or how that one hour is driven. So if you know the solution and you're just saying it in the first two minutes, it might be an issue. So please drive the interview, show that you can think right from the scratch. You can build it. Sometimes you have to fake it, but that is how the interviews go in DS algo rounds. So in harder problems, you have to follow this for easier problems. Do not follow it. But in all the easier problems, I'll also be following this pattern. Why? So that you get used to this pattern and this gets into your blood so that when you get into an interview, you actually are kind of always speaking brute better optimal. Okay. So coming to uh, coming back to the problem, finding the largest element in an array. What does the problem mean? Obviously given an array of integers, give me the largest integer in it. So over here, the largest integer is five. So I want you to give me five. How can you do this? Very simple. If I have to ask you, what is the brute force solution that comes to your mind? You'll be like, Striver, the brute force solution is I will be sorting it. And if I sort it, what will happen is it will be looking like one, two, two, three, five. The moment I sort it, the last element, did I tell you what is the index of the last element I did? So if the size over here is five, the last will be array of n minus one. Can I say if I print this after sorting, this will be my largest element, obviously, because once you have sorted it, it is sorted in an ascending order. So the smallest will be at first and the largest will be at last. So if you sort it and you print it, you will be getting the largest element. Now, what will be the time complexity of this solution? You know, in order to sort, if you apply merge sort, quick sort, any one, any one of them, the time complexity will take n log n. And 
the space complexity if you apply quicksort will be we go of one and I'm, I'm ignoring the recursive stack space but i'm still taking a time complexity of n log n to sort it so this is why this is a brute force solution because this is the most like normal solution that comes to your hand this is why this is the brute force solution because this is the most like generic solution that will come to your head when you hear this problem so once you've given uh, the brute to the interview you can have a better solution or you might not so in this case we do not have a better solution so we'll move to the optimal solution now what is the most optimal solution for this one obviously we have to optimize n login so what we will do is we will say okay let's let's keep a largest variable and i'll say largest to be the first element because i know one of the elements of the array will always be largest so i will say first element you are the largest assume you are the largest and then i start traversing i say okay three you can travel from three or you can travel from two as well that is okay i say three are you greater than the largest so largest is currently stored as three three are you greater, greater than three he says no so i say okay move ahead two are you greater than three he says no move one are you greater than three no he says move five are you greater than three yes so this will be five next two are you greater than five no so after this the iteration is over once the iteration is over the largest is storing the largest element and it's very simple if i have to code it it'll be like largest is a of zero and then you start the for loop from i equal to zero you go something like i n i plus plus and you say if array of i again i am writing the pseudo code can be written in any of the languages array of i that's it and at the end of the day you can say print array of sorry a print largest is what you'll print simple as that now you can also run the loop from one because you have stored the largest of a of zero doesn't matter not a not a big optimization so what is the time complexity we're just running a loop for b go of n so can i say the time complexity over here is b go of n now this is much much better than the brute force solution this is why this will be categorized as an optimal solution because you kind of optimize the time complexity somewhere because b go of n is definitely better than b go of n log n so this is how you can easily solve this problem in case you want to submit this problem the problem link will be in the description so remember one thing we are talking about arrays but in a lot of places you might find something like a vector and in java you might find array list or list so as long as it's a data structure which stores similar elements like vector is also a data structure which stores similar elements it is okay like it will be considered like it's not an array but the problems can be solved using arrays using list using vectors because it's a data structure which is storing similar integers so you might find something like a vector got it but the problem link is in the description so when you go to online compilers you don't have to print it usually they will be asking you to return it so you can easily go ahead and return it like this so going to the next problem it states second largest element in an array without sorting this question might look very very simple but this question is very very commonly asked in an interview because a lot of people do not know how to solve it so they might ask you second largest or they might ask you second smallest so the pattern that you have to answer in an interview is you start from root then you go to better then you go to optimal that's how you will be solving it now when i talk about brute and you have to find second largest element what will be the brute force the brute force is going to be very simple i will say hey i'll be sorting the array and if i sort the array it will look something like one two four five double seven and i know one thing for sure my largest element will be array of n minus one that is something which i'm very very sure about but can i say that the second largest element will be array of n minus two can i say this i cannot because the largest is seven and yeah there is another seven but that's not second largest that is largest the second largest is five so what you have to do is you have to start from the n minus 12th index and you have to kind of go like okay seven are you equivalent to largest because as of now largest is seven that is what you have stored because you have got this and you've stored it in largest now you go at seven and you say are you same as seven he says yes 
So definitely, you are not second largest. It then goes back. Five, are you same as largest? No. So you are my second largest. So you are my second largest. That's how you can do it. So it's, it's more like you have to start from the back. Since I know that the largest is array of n minus 1, I can probably start from n minus 2 because that is the second last index. And I can go like greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus. And what I can say is if array of i is not equal to largest, can I say this will be my second largest? Second largest equal to array of i. And then probably I can break out because there's no need to go any further. Can I say this will be my code? So at first, what did I do? At first, I did something like a sorting. So the sorting ended up taking a n logarithmic of n, correct? Because sorting is, sorting definitely takes that much of time. And then this at the worst case, what is the worst case? If I think properly, if I give you an array, something like this, one, seven, 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 then what will happen? You will start from here. No, this is equivalent to largest. This is also equivalent to largest. This is also equivalent to largest. This is also equivalent to largest. And this is also equivalent to largest. Sorry, this is not. So you traverse the entire right from the end, like n minus 2, until the beginning. So this at the worst case can go for a big go of n. Now there might be a case where your second largest might not exist. Might not exist. In that case, you can keep it as minus 1. Might not. Like if this is 7, there is no second largest element in the array. But that is, that might not happen. You, you should tell the interviewer by yourself these cases. So I can say the total overall complexity of the brute force solution is first I sort and the worst case I might travel the entire way in order just in case all of them are largest elements. So that's how you'll be telling the brute force approach. So what will be a better solution? A better solution will be like, we will do a first, yes, first pass. And we'll find out the largest element. If you remember, we did find out the largest element before this problem. So what I will do is I'll at first keep largest as one, which is this guy. Then I'll start from two. And I'll be like, two, are you greater than one? He says, yes. Then I'll go to four. Four, are you greater than two? He says, yes. Then I go to seven. Seven, are you greater than four? He says, yes. Then I again go to seven. Seven, are you greater than seven? He says, no. Then I go to 5. 5, are you greater than 7? No. So the largest on the first pass is stored as 7. And the code will be similar to the first one. So you have figured out the largest over here by doing a first pass. Now what you will do is you will say, okay, let's keep second largest as minus 1. And let's again try the same thing. 1. Hey, 1, are you greater than minus 1? He says, yes. And are you not largest? He says, yes. So I'll take one and that will be my second largest. Okay, let's go ahead. He says two, are you greater than one? He says, yes. But are you not largest? He says, yes. So thereby, I take two. Then I go to four and I ask four, are you greater than two? He says, yes. But four, you're not largest, na? He says, no. So four. Next seven, seven, are you greater than four? Yes, but are you largest? Yes, I am largest. So do not take me. Do not take me. So he will not take him. Next, the seven. Seven, are you greater? Yes, but I am largest. Five, are you greater than four? Yes, are you largest? No. So five comes up. In the second pass, you got the second largest as five. So if I have to write the code, can I say the code is very simple? I start from zero. I go until the end, I plus plus. And I say, listen, if array of i, maybe you can store second largest as minus one, just in case there is none. And you can say second largest if it's greater. And if array of i is not equal to largest, then you can say second largest equal to array of i. Quite simple. This will be a second pass. First, you write this this piece of code, then you can write this piece of code. And at the end of the day, you can easily go ahead and print second largest. 
if I have to ask you the time complexity of this, now you can say that it's a big often, but you should not in an interview. You should say, okay, the first pass takes B go of N. The second pass takes B go of N. So the algorithm is taking two passes. And it's like N plus N, it's actually running for two passes. So it's a B go of 2N approach. So we have got a better approach of B go of 2N, where we have to run twice through the array and we can get the largest in the first pass. And we can get the second largest in the second pass. Now it's time to understand the optimal approach. So in the optimal approach, what you will do is you will say, hey, my largest will be the first guy, which is array of zero. And my second largest will be nothing but minus one. So I'm saying, okay, the first guy is my largest for sure. So I'm kind of taking one as my largest and I'm saying second largest is minus one. Assuming that this array does not contains any negative numbers. That is an assumption I'm working at. In case the array contains negative numbers, you can probably take this as integer minimum. Integer minimum. In all the cases that I have told, in case the array contains negative numbers, you can take it as some very small number like integer minimum or a very, very negative number. Got it? So I've largest is assigned as one. And second largest is assigned as minus one. Now, what you do is you simply go ahead and say, okay, fine, let's try this. So we know the first guy, we should not do anything. Why? Because that's the largest as of now. So we will not do anything to it. We'll go to the two. We have two. So two is like, hey, two, are you greater than largest? He says, I am. Dude, I am greater than largest for sure. So I'm like, okay, you are greater than largest. So definitely, you should be the largest. But can I say, if someone becomes the largest, hear me out properly. If someone becomes the largest, then the previous largest will go second, isn't it? If you are in a class and you are always first, and if someone comes up and says, gets better marks than you, then he will be the first guy and you will be the second, right? The same logic. If two is greater than largest, so what will happen is this will go to the second largest, right? Because there is someone who is now the largest and we will replace the largest by two. Perfect. Now we go to four. Four says, am I greater than largest? Yes, you are. So now the largest goes to second largest. It goes to second largest and this one becomes four. Now I have seven. Seven says, I'm the largest. So this will take the largest. And this will become the largest. Again, seven, nothing to do because we need to be very careful. We have a seven, which is equivalent to largest. So do not do anything. If it's equivalent to largest, do not do anything. Next, we have five. This is why you have to understand one thing. We got five. Now this five is not greater than largest. But we need to check. Is it greater than second largest? He says, yes, I am. So just replace the second largest. So apparently you got the largest as seven and the second largest as five. Very simple. Make sure do not do anything in terms of equivalent. Do not. If it's lesser, then only compare with second largest. Otherwise, do not. So let's now code this up. By the way, you can find the problem link in the description. So over here, what they're asking is you have to return the second largest and the second smallest. So you have to find both of them. So something like you have to find second largest right and then you have to find second smallest and then you have to return the array of this and in what order yeah first the largest and then the smallest this is what you have to do so maybe we can write a function which finds me second largest where i pass in the array and the n and similarly i can write a function which finds me the second smallest remember in your coding interviews or rounds you have to code using these kind of variable namings. You cannot give X, Y, E, B, C. You have to have proper variable namings. You have to have proper function namings so that you stand out in an interview. So let's quickly write the second largest. Second largest is taking the array and the n. So what did I say at first? What do you need to do? You have to kind of say someone is the largest and maybe we can call it as A of zero and we can say second largest. 
and we can say second largest as minus one. Now let's quickly see if they're stating anything about uh, like okay, they have clearly stated the array will be of minimum of length two. So we are sure that every array will have two numbers. That is something which we are sure about. And the other thing, if we read properly, it states that it has unique, unique non-negative integers. So it's kind of saying that it doesn't have duplicates. So if the array size is two and it doesn't have duplicates, so every array will have a second largest element. Every array will have a second largest element. Got it? So we can just go across from one till n and we can say, hey, listen, if a of i is greater than largest, then the second largest guy will clearly, yes, there's no doubt in this, will, will take the largest guy and the largest will be replaced by array of i. Make sure you first take the largest and then replace the largest. Otherwise, there will be a problem. And then we can say, hey, listen, if a of i is greater than largest and an a of i, because it has to be, it has to be lesser than largest, by the way. And a of i is greater than, very important, is greater than second largest. In that case, use a second largest. Can you please take a of i? This is, that's it. And you can say return second largest. Now similarly, let's write the second smallest as well. The second smallest will again take the same vector. I and the n. And you can say smallest equal to array of zero. And you can say second smallest. The name is kind of weird, not an issue. Over here, please make sure you give int max. Why int max? The reason being you're finding smallest. So it has to be a very big number as the array will be from zero. So minus one will work for minimals, like for largest it will work. But for this, you have to give int max because it's 10 to the power nine. Had this been greater then you have to take a bigger number than this. Got it? And now, now let's start with one and let's go till here. That's something which we know. And now we know one thing. We need the smallest. If a of i is smaller than the smallest, then the second smallest takes the smallest, quite obvious, and and the smallest takes the array of i. And what if array of i is not equal to smallest? That means it's not. But it is smaller than the second smallest. I'm like, okay, if you are smaller than the second smallest, then that's perfect. And the second smallest will just take array of i. And once you have done this, return smallest. Once you have done everything, you can just go ahead and run it and it should be running absolutely fine. It does, and let's quickly submit this and see if it is submitted or not. But the problem link is in the description. Make sure you try it out. By the way, what is the time complexity of this? We go of n. Because you're just doing one pass for finding second largest, it is big O of n. The optimal solution to find second largest has just takes one pass, and the time complexity is big O of n. That is why it is better than the better solution, and hence it's called the optimal solution. So we are done with the second problem as well. Let's go on to the next problem, which says check if the array is sorted. So coming to the problem, check if the array is sorted. Very simple problem. Given an array, you have to see if it's sorted in a non descending order. What does it mean? One, okay. Two, two is kind of greater than or equal to one. Two is greater than or equal to two. Three is greater than or equal to two. Three is greater than or equal to three. And four is greater than or equal to three. So it's okay. Now let's check out the next array. One, okay. Two, okay, because greater than or equal to one. One, not greater than or equal to two, not. So this is not sorted. This is sorted. How will you do it? <laughs> Very simple. Just traverse in the array from the first element. Do we have a brute better optimal for this? I don't think we need a brute better optimal for this. It's a very straightforward problem. So what you'll do is you'll start from the first index and you'll be like, let's check with the previous. Is the previous smaller than or equal to? It is. Then you will go to the next. And again, you will check with the previous. Is it smaller than or equal to? Then you'll go to the next. Then you'll go to the next. And similarly, you can check for everyone. Very obvious, isn't it? So it's like, if I have to write the pseudocode, it'll go from one, it'll go till n, 
You don't need to check for the first element. No need to check for the first element. You say, hey, listen, if array of i is actually greater than equal to array of i minus 1, that should be the case for non-descending. Non-descending. It's okay. But if it is not, then there is a problem. So you say return false, stating the array is not sorted. And if the entire iteration is over, if the entire iteration is over and i completes the entire iteration and reaches the step, which means the end of the for loop, then you can say return true in the function, stating this, this array is sorted. So if I try the same code in the online compiler, by the way, again, the problem link will be in the description. You can see, you can simply write like this and we'll, we can leave the if as blank and we can in the else just return. The moment you find someone who has a problem, that means the array is not sorted. Just return a false. If it completes the for loop, which is the step, then you return a true. This is how easy it is in order to write if an array is sorted or not. What is the time complexity? Again, it takes a single pass. So big O of n is the time complexity in order to check if the array is sorted. Now let's move to the next problem, which is remove duplicates from a sorted array. So coming to the problem, remove duplicates in place from the sorted array. What does the problem tell you about? So you'll be given an array, which is definitely a sorted one. And it will be containing integers. If you see, there are duplicates over here. And you need to remove it. So if I ask you, what are the unique elements in this array? It will be like 1, 2, and 3. That's what you have to write at the first three places. If there are three unique elements, then you take up the first three places and put those unique elements over there, like 1, 2, 3. And the remaining places, they do not care what you are putting. They do not care. You can put whatever you wish to. You cannot put that as your choice. But what they care is if there are three unique elements, sorry, if there are if there are three unique elements, then the first three places should be filled up with those three unique elements. Once you fill up, like once you modify the given array, again, you cannot create any new array. You have to modify the given array itself. Once you have modified the given array, you just tell them how many unique elements are there. So you have to return. So over here, there are three. So you have to return three. Modify and return the number of unique elements. That is what the problem asks, is asking you to do. So whenever this question, now this question has been asked in a lot of interviews. If this question comes up to you, should you be saying the optimal approach directly? The answer to that is no. Drive the interview. And the first approach that you should always say is the brute force. Now what is the brute force that comes in into your head? It's like, I need unique elements. Whenever I hear the term unique, what comes into my head? Set kind of a set data structure. I'm like, yes. So let's define a set data structure. So I'll be defining a set data structure. Let's iterate in the array. One, put it into the set. Again, one. If you take this one and you put it into the set, will the set accept one? No, it already has a one. So there will be no new addition in the set. Next, go to two. If you take this two and you put it into the set, there will be a new addition. Perfect. Next, go to two. If you take this two and you put it into the set, will there be a new addition? No. Take this two. No new addition. Take this three and put it into the set. There will be a new addition. Take this three and put it into the set. No new addition. So at the end of the day, the set after one iteration, very, very important. After one iteration, the set will be containing three elements. So this is how the code will look like after one iteration, like very simple, declare a set and then pass on and insert everything. So the set will be something like this after one iteration. Now what you will do is you will say, okay, I need to put everything into the, like the unique elements in the starting of the array. Fine. Let's go to the set. Let's keep a pointer here, which is the zeroth index. Like if I have to write the index, it's like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's keep an index at the zeroth index. And let's go to the first element of the set. 
and that's one. Let's take that one and place it into the zeroth index. Done. Once I've done this, let's move index one step ahead because my first place is occupied. Let's take the next element of the set and put it into the first index. Once I've done that, let's move it. Next, three, put it. Done that, let's move. Does the set have any more elements? No, the set doesn't have any more elements. If the set doesn't have any more elements, what will happen? Obviously, there'll be no further insertion into the array. If there is no further insertion, thereby you can say, wherever the index stops, because it's a zero-based indexing array, this will be the size of this particular array. And you can return this particular index. And this is what the brute force will be. So if I have to write the code, I'll quickly just show you the code. The code is very simple. Declare an index as zero. So this is how you iterate in the set. Just an iterator. Auto is something which is automatically assigning it to integer because the set is containing integers. By the way, the set stores everything in ascending order. The first it will be storing one, then two, then three. Okay. So iterator. So every time you get one, it gets into the index, then index plus plus. Very simple code. If I have to analyze the time complexity, what will it be? So the set in order to insert takes logarithmic of n. The set. Okay. So it will be like n logarithmic of n for this particular first pass. Again, this one is n. So the overall time complexity for the brute force approach is n log n to insert into the set and a bigo of n. And what space are you using? You're using a bigo of n space, y n space. Imagine all of those were unique elements. All of those were unique elements. So the set would have taken everything into it. That's why that's why the extra space is there. There's an extra space of bigo of n being used as well. So this is the TC. This is the space complexity. So definitely this is a brute force solution. And let's try to improve on it. In order to optimize this brute force solution, you have to apply something as a two pointer approach. Very simple. And then you will get the optimal approach. Why did I say very simple? Let's think. So the array is sorted, right? And we know one thing for sure. First element is this. And the next, el like the first element will always be at its first place because that's unique in itself. The next place will be taken by someone who is not equivalent to one because we are talking about unique, right? So the next element will be someone who will be not equivalent to this one. So can I say, I will go, go and check which element is not equivalent to this first and I'll get this. The moment I get this, I'll just put it into the next index. And then again, I'll go and find who is the next who is not equivalent to this guy. And then I'll put it into the next. And then again, I'll try, but I'll not find. So this is how you can easily enter everything. Got the thought process? It's about, you know, one thing for sure, this guy will always be at its first place. So you don't need to change it. You don't need to change it. You just keep a pointer here stating I. And now you go right and say, who's the guy who's different than one? That's it. So you probably can keep a pointer J and you say, one, are you different than one? And he says, no. So I'll go ahead. I said, J, are you different than one? He says, yes, yes, I am. So I says, you can take the place in front of me. So he will take the place here. And since he has taken the place here, the I pointer will move here. I'll just erase this so that you have better clarity. I pointer will move here. Now, this is done. So what you'll do is you'll move J. And you'll say two, are you equivalent? He says, yes, ah, not it. no use. You'll say again, two, are you equivalent? He says, yes. No use. Three, are you equivalent? No. Another unique. If you get another unique, where will it go? In front of two. So if it goes in front of two, this three will, uh, no need to omit, this three will come here. Perfect. And if this three comes here, what will happen to I? The I will also move from here to here. Now again, you will find the next guy 
So it's not equivalent to 3. That's equivalent. And then over, the iteration is over. Once the iteration is over, do you notice that the first three places are filled with the three unique elements? And your i is standing at which index? If I write the indexing 0, 1, 2, is standing at the second index. So what will be the size of the unique, like what will be the number of the unique elements? Definitely i plus 1. Quite simple. So if I have to write the code, how will the pseudo code look like? Can I say, I know one thing, the first unique element is i equal to 0. And then I know I'll start from 1 and I'll go on till n, that's for sure. And I need to figure out someone who is not equivalent to my current one. If array of j is not equivalent to array of i, oh, not equivalent. Take my, take my front position, take my front position. So I'll be like, okay, let's give him the front position. Front position, i plus 1. Please take your front position. Once you have taken your front position, what will you do? Okay, let me go to that front position. Because now if I go to the front position, if I go here, then only I can now do the future. I can get the next future element which is not equivalent. Got it? So this is how it will work. So I'll go to the front position. Done. Very simple two point. Once this for loop is complete, I know the size will be i plus 1. Because i at the end of the day will be here, which is 2. But the size will be one more. So thereby, we will be returning i plus 1. This is how the two pointer approach will look like. And if I have to ask you the optimals, time complexity, simple one pass, we go off n, space complexity, we go off 1. Why? Because one pass, and you're doing everything in that particular array as it was being asked in the, like if you remember the problem statement, it's stated in place. And that has been done. This is the optimal solution for this problem. Just in case you want to submit the problem, the problem link will be in the description. And I've written the same code. Now let's quickly submit this and see if it is running fine or not. Yeah, it does run. So with this, I can say that I've completed the fourth problem as well. So for this video, we will be keeping it till here because I don't want to solve a lot of problems and make the video long because that might scare you. In the next uh, video, again, we'll be solving probably the next five problems that is what we will be targeting in the next video so with this uh, i will be wrapping up this video but if you have understood everything that i've taught in this particular video to follow our tradition do comment understood if you are new to our channel what are you waiting for please please consider subscribing to us because that is the only thing that keeps you motivated to make these kind of content and yeah hit that like button and with and yeah, if you haven't followed me on instagram the idea is over here do follow me on instagram linkedin and whatever social media links you'll find in the description with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's be in some other video until then bye bye Take care.